Welcome to Ask GC Anything. Coming up this week, why do pros downsize their bikes? How does it get faster on the flat? And how do you stop your shoes from smelling? Is that, is that your feet, mate? It's not me, I washed it. <laughs> yes, and don't forget, if you'd like to get involved on next week's show, then to use the hashtag TalkBack. And if you want to win three months free subscription from our mates over at Zwift, then to use the hashtag AskGCNTraining for all those training specific questions. Right, mate, you ready? Yeah, get your laptop out, come on. Do you know what the first question is, buddy? I do, it's in from SAF1981. Any tips or recommendations for cleaning and making your cycling shoes fresh after a sweaty session on the turbo? I'm going to be honest, I haven't really had an issue with smelly no. shoes. No, but, but if I did, there's been a few things that you can do, and that's putting baking soda in your shoe. There's another one. Do you know another one? Uh, wash them, I would imagine. Wash them, and you can even put them in one of those Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. I've been told that works an absolute treat. So why don't you give those a try and let us know which one works in the comment section below. You know, funnily enough, shoes, it depends on the brand, which ones smell. I think it's to do with the materials they use. Really? Mm. That's quite interesting. Some smell worse than others. Right, we got a question in from Terence Hoare. Question about cramps. During training, I don't ever cramp, even if I'm doing a six to a seven hour ride. However, on those two hour really hard race efforts, I cramp up really badly. What are some possible reasons for this? We well, don't give us a lot of info. Um, we don't know where you're cramping for a start. Is it mm. one of those little tiny stabilizing muscles that you're all of a sudden using in a weird way in a race? There's a few basics to cover though. First, make sure you are hydrated and well fueled because empty dead legs can lead to cramp eventually. Yes, that's very true. So make sure you've got hydro tabs, that sort of thing, and that you're actually eating enough carbohydrate because depleted muscles will cramp sooner. Um, cramp is actually coming from conditioning more than dehydration, they say. So oh, really? maybe you want to look at including some more race style efforts in your training. Yeah, know. there's lots of things about cramp, isn't there, out there, but there's no real evidence of how cramp really occurs. No, it's, it's a little bit vague, isn't it? It is. One it's thing quite that difficult might help to, though, actually. to really hone down on. Yeah, another thing that might help, though, would be a massage. Yeah. Try and get some of those, you know, the the um, lingering after effects of the cramp that you've had. If it's occurring in the same place, maybe a good flush through with a massage could help. Yeah, and it sounds like when you're doing those really hard, short efforts, that's when you're getting the cramp. So when you're doing kind of really exerting and really intense sessions. So make sure you're kind of ticking all those boxes. Hydration, get some salts back in using hydro tabs. As Opie says, get a nice massage to flush out. Not a nice massage, a brutal massage. Brutal massage, yes, and stretch. And then, yeah, try and see if that helps. Right, it's that time of the show where we announce the winner of the three months free subscription from our mates over at Zwift. And the winner is Defridius. I hope I pronounced your name right. I probably haven't, so I do apologize. But do get in touch on Facebook and you'll get that code over to you. And your question is, I'm half decent at climbs, but I've really struggled on the flats. Please kindly let me know about any workouts that can help me out. An aero bike and weights are just not helping. Well, I hope you're not adding weights to your bike because that's not going to help you on the flat, is it? It's not, no. But the aero bike, even if you can't feel it, it will be helping a little bit. Anyway, so when it comes to training to be fast on the flats, there's quite a lot that you can do. And one of the first things you want to think of is high speed cadence drills and long efforts at that high cadence in a good aero position. So you don't want to get extreme, you're not riding a time trial bike. But something around 20 to 40 minutes of 80% of your max heart rate, for example. So if your max heart rate is 200, then somewhere around 160 will help you know, build up that prolonged effort on a flat road because it, it is going to be a prolonged effort. So 95 to 105 cadence, try and keep your cadence within that range and you really want to have an average cadence. You don't want to drop up, uh, down below. You can go up a little bit because it is all about speed and then ride at a continual heart rate for around 20 to 40 minutes. If you want to do 20 minutes, you can do two blocks, for example. And then something else that you can do, which I always personally found worked really, really well, was three minute really high cadence efforts. So I put down here 120 revs per minute and above. But actually, you know, 130 to 140 really wouldn't do you any harm at mm. all. So max efforts these are. So you want to find a road that is completely flat. And then for three minutes on, three minutes off, really rev your legs right up to that high cadence and then hold it there at max effort. It's going to be really hard, but over the weeks, you really will notice the progression. I might actually try some of that, Opie. I could do with some help on the flat. Yeah, well, we're quite lucky. It's quite flat where we live, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as always, we send this question off to Zwift and they came back with this session that we think you should give a go. Right, we've got a question in from Simon Spinzik. 
Hi GCN, I'm currently training for a Criterium style junior race. Only 20 kilometers and it's in six weeks. My power output should be enough to stay in the main pack, but I'm currently not confident in my technical group riding skills. How can I improve this with only one other person at a similar level to train with? Oh, it's a good question. And one that's actually quite a popular issue for riders out there. Something that we thought the other day when we were riding was as a little challenge, how long can you ride, pretend you're on your bike, how long can you ride before you have to break the contact? So start off, maybe you can do 200 meters, then 500 meters and challenge yourself. Can you, can you do a whole kilometer without separating? Yeah. Um, and this is a good thing to practice in a car park on a grassy field at slow speeds, but then the same principles apply when you're doing 30, 40, or even 50 kilometers an hour. It's all about being relaxed and calm and understanding what your inputs to the bike are doing and not stressing. Yeah, the more relaxed you are, the better you are actually on the bike and feeling how the bike moves. And you can do that by even practicing off-road, yeah. maybe with a cross bike or a mountain bike through the woods in, on a muddy, muddy, you know, woody track, and you'll feel the bike and you'll get more and more comfortable and then you'll find it easier to ride in a bunch really because you won't be tense and you won't be stressing as Opie says. Not so exactly. give that a go, I guess. Yep. Question from David Dwyer. One for the future, do pro riders ride smaller frames than they would normally use? I see photos of people like Will Clark that are riding bikes that are just quite small under them. It's a good question, that. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, they don't ride bikes smaller than they normally would because they're normally riding the smaller bikes, mm. if that makes sense. They handle a little bit better, a little bit sharper handling. They're generally a little bit lighter. And they're stiffer as well. I suppose geometry. they can be a little bit stiffer depending on the brand. Yeah, um, I, I, they look better. Yeah, I personally ride uh, a smaller frame. Yeah, longer stem, smaller frame. It's yeah. more stable. And actually. you can get lower on the front end because that yeah. head tube isn't so you know, why you can actually get lower. Yeah, modern bike design has really seen head tubes grow and grow and grow. And yeah. I think that's probably the driving force in why riders choose to ride a smaller frame than is perhaps suggested for their height. Yeah, and if you were wondering what Will Clark looks like on a bike, we've actually put a picture up here now. Tommy Van Santa up next. I'm a 12 year old boy and got into cycling for almost a year now. I'm struggling to combine cycling and school. How did you combine cycling and school in your youth? Yeah, good question. Uh, I actually, kind of struggled a bit with it. It is difficult to put in the hours that I wanted to when, because I didn't get in cycling until I was 16, 17. Uh, so I was quite late to the party. But you're 12 years old, you're super young, you got loads and loads of time. So just kind of work on school. And if you had to have a bit of spare time, then you know go out and ride your bike, but do it for enjoyment. Don't stress over training because we all need school at the end of the day. We all need to get ed education. Yep, we do. Not that we did. Don't tell him that. Oh, right, sorry. What you do want to focus on is, is building up your skills and how good you are at handling your bike and those sorts of things, because that will really help you later in your cycling career. It will indeed. Question from Steve H. Hi guys, nice show as always. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. With training on Zwift, which is better for fat burning, interval work or longer rides? Ooh, good question, Steve. Well, um, it depends how much time you've got, basically. If you've got all the hours in the day and you can do long endurance rides on little fuel, then that's gonna be great. But if you haven't got loads of time, then really short, high intensity interval sessions will really boost your meta metabolism and keep it higher for longer after the intervals are finished. And that's kind of recognized as a really good way of burning fat these days. So you could do like two or three really high intensity sessions each week, and that will continue to burn more fat as a percentage of your training time throughout the day afterwards. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good point actually. Idea. And there's another way of doing it because you tend to burn fat also when you're doing low intensity work for a longer period of time. Yeah. So if you maybe put in a two hour like ride on the turbo, um, it's quite a long ride, but two hour ride before breakfast, uh, quite it's an easy kind of state, so yeah. low heart rate then you te do tend to burn some fat that way as well. So why don't you give them both a go and just, yeah, feel which one's better, I guess. Next up, we've got a question from Christian Hader. Hi guys, I'm riding two 100 kilometer races within three days. I'm not in perfect shape and I need the best possible way to recover in the day in between. Any recommendations? We would say maybe doing an hour ride nice and easy on that middle day. The yep. Even the pros at the tour tend to ride around three hours when you know they've got their rest day during those big grand tours. So you don't really have to go that far, but maybe an hour spin will really, really help. Yep, 
definitely, it'll stop your legs from seizing up and it'll help prepare you for the next day. Also make sure you catch up on your sleep, you fuel well, and you have a good meal the night before the second race, and also the night after the first race. Yeah, we've actually got a video here which shows you how to recover faster from training. Yeah, and you have two options when it comes to said rest. You can either take the word literally and sit in your backside for a day, or you can do what's called active recovery, or a recovery ride. Always one of my favorite days as a pro. We got a question in from DJ Ashish. I hope I got that one right, sorry if I haven't. Hey, big fan, so please give some tips for increasing the amount of sprint time. Well, you're in luck because we have got our very special resident sprinter in with us, won't we, Chris? Yeah, we have. He'll be along anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm guessing what you want to do is try and make your sprint longer. The body's natural tendency is to sprint for about five to seven seconds, roughly, give or take. And it is hard to start pushing past that, and it does take quite a bit of training. So I would start with six times 12 seconds on the first two weeks, and then you wanna progress them to six times 15 seconds, and you wanna have a good 10 minutes in between those sprints as well. Then when you get to week three, four, five, you can up them to around 20 seconds. And then once you get really ambitious with it, and you really wanna have some, it's kind of becoming an anaerobic VO2 workout, but 30 second sprints, and then to really help boost the shorter, your ability to sprint off high speed, you can start doing one minute efforts on the back oh, of that Chris, as well. Oh Chris, these sound really tough. Yeah, they are. They're not easy, they're not fun, and it's gonna ruin the rest of your day if you do them properly. Yeah. But it will really, really help. So 12 seconds, then push them out to 15, then 20, and then 30. Well, good luck, mate, because I'd rather you than me. Yeah, you wanna think about your gearing and your position on the bike. Um, we've actually got a good sprint video on the channel that we will put on the screen in a second, and all of those things will really help you. Really explode down through your core muscles, into the bike. Moving the bike side to side with your legs and arms in a continual smooth motion. It is a complete maximal effort, so really push down hard on the pedals and pull back up through the bottom of the pedal stroke. Right, that's the end of this week's Ask GC Anything. I've enjoyed it, have you Chris? It's been good. If you wanna have your questions answered, use the hashtag TalkBack in the comments below and to be in with a chance of winning a free three month subscription to Zwift, use the hashtag Ask GCN Training. And before we go, big shout out to the GCN shop because they've got these Cobble Classic t-shirts in over there. Are the Cobble Classics coming up, are they? They are, mate. I mean, I'm super excited. Best time of the year for me. I quite like Flanders. And don't forget then, give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.